From flesh-eating beetles to cursed ancient artifacts, there are some rooms and museums you should just never enter. That being said, we'll allow it this one time. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and here are the top 10 secret rooms and museums you should never enter. Kicking off the list at number 10, British Museum's Adult Room. Okay, young ones, hide your eyes, here we go. We'll kick this list off on a scandalous note. The British Museum, they have a long lost adult themed room, to put it lightly. The museum itself dates back to the mid 1700s. In its initial opening, the museum only let 10 people in at a time. Now, of course, it holds many more people every day, but some collections, not everybody can handle. In the Victorian era, the museum had a secret room for obscene objects, or objects that are deemed perverse. There's a part of a temple wall that shows, you know, the dirtiest deed being done. In the collection includes a Roman terracotta lamp that depicts a naked woman on a crocodile. Number nine, flesh-eating beetle room. Okay, enough about ancient butts. Let's move on to the weird, shall we? Chicago's Field Museum. This one's chock full of secret rooms. I'll mention one more on this list later on, but I have to include the flesh-eating beetle room. The Field Museum uses real hide beetles to clean its specimens in order to get each of these carcasses ready for showtime. These beetles are on the clock. They're business-oriented. In just a few hours, a small rodent can be completely cleaned. Number eight, Naples Secret Adult Room. Okay, we can all agree that last one was pretty disgusting, so I'll liven up the mood once again with some scandalous Pompeii excavations. After the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, the small city of Pompeii was of course covered in hot ash. Now the ancient Roman ruin is still being uncovered today, but back in the 1700s, most of the lost city was excavated for the first time in history. And the king of Naples got the best of the best, right? Who's first up, first dibs. Most of the contents are now kept in the archeological museum in Naples, but some have to be held in the secret room. In the past, you had to receive permission from the king himself to take a quick peek at the sensual art. Number seven, Medici chapels. This one begins with an epic discovery, okay? Back in 1975, the director of the Medici Chapels Museum in Florence, Italy, was searching for a new exit route for visitors. He was trying to expand whilst controlling traffic a little bit more, right? We love big moves. Now, in doing so, the director himself stumbled across this trap door beneath a closet. There also lies a few clues on the walls. There are sketches and drawings the style of which seems to belong to one Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, this is pretty big news. This room was immediately closed for renovations. It was held a secret until 2020. So for many, of course, this is still widely unknown. So I hope you learned a thing or two so far in this list. If you live in the area, go check out some ancient trap doors in Italy. There you go. Number six, secret insect room. If you're in Liverpool and you love insects, oh boy, do I have just the tea for you. Let's go. Inside the World Museum in Liverpool lies a secret room and inside it contains around a million insects. Sex. Don't worry, don't worry, these ones are dead this time around. This collection began back in 1855. The 13th Earl of Derby, he's like, you know what? I need a cupboard full of shiny bugs. Let's make it happen, gang. Yeah, let's do it. Thousands of specimens now hide in this room, including the world's largest beetle and a moth with the largest wingspan. Big old shirt with wings, there you go. Imagine night at the museum, but it takes place in the World Museum in London. Bugs everywhere. Ben Stiller would not make it out. No way. There would not be three sequels. Number five, restricted Aboriginal art. While some collections are kept out of sight for museum visitors because they're, you know, extremely scandalous in nature or they're live bugs, Others are kept in secret rooms out of respect. In the National Museum of Australia, David Kaus, senior curator of the museum's Aboriginal programs, he wrote this long report explaining the choice to hide these artifacts from history. Now, David himself has said, and I quote, that it is the responsibility of museums to respect the cultures they want to depict. The public use of Aboriginal secrets and or sacred objects is not consistent with this responsibility, end quote. In order to gain access to these restricted Aboriginal objects, these beautiful pearl shell ornaments, you need permission from traditional Aboriginal custodians. Can't just get a fast pass and go take a peek. Not that easy, my friends. Number four, Vatican secrets. Vatican archives are 53 miles long, so there's a lot of secrets hiding down there, okay? There's around 35,000 volumes of catalog. The Vatican secret archives are no joke. They're very real, but in order to see them for yourselves, eh, it's gonna take some time. You gotta earn it, okay? Again, you can't just beep fast pass your way in. The indexes are not public, hence why I'm including them in this list. Only highly respected scholars can access it after they're 75 years old. Their official purpose is to house holy official paperwork, and of course, it's a treasure trove of 
anything and everything related to the Pope, as well as these long lost ancient documents. Cause I mean, because where else do you safely store a letter from Mary Queen of Scots, right? Dudes are out here hucking cakes at the Mona Lisa. Yeah, we're gonna keep these ancient notes locked up, I think. No one's gonna be hucking cakes at this one. Queen Mary of Scots was killed after serving roughly 20 years in custody, but eventually she was sentenced to death for conspiring to kill Queen Elizabeth the first. But before she met her untimely fate, she wrote a letter to Pope Sixtus V, literally begging for her life in this letter. But of course, as we now know, the Pope did not intervene, and on February 8th, 1587, Mary Queen of Scots was executed. Now, when it comes to cursed items withheld from the public, this note is definitely up there. There's also a secret room that contains the 200 foot tall tower of the winds, only accessible through these secret archives. So we're never gonna see them. Number three. King Tut's Cursed Artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum was set to open in 2018, and then finally it did in 2021. And while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, like all of them discovered with him, will now be on display. Now prior to this museum being open, we only saw 150 artifacts from his tomb. They took all these pieces out on tour, like their kiss or something. But now this museum will house thousands of artifacts. We could all go and see it in one place. There's over 7,000 square meters it's quite a display. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum or if you saw this King Tut world tour on the road, I'm jealous because many of these artifacts were held aside from the public because they were deemed cursed. So if you visit, uh, don't touch anything, please. Number two. Deathly Pearls. If you've seen the movie Annabelle Comes Home, this next secret room in a secret museum should ring a bell. Character Daniela in the movie, she tries to communicate to a loved one beyond the grave. Now, in order to do so, she puts on a bracelet from Ed and Lorraine's Occult Museum. Now, there isn't a mourning bracelet in the real Occult Museum, but there is such thing as the Pearls of Death, and you cannot touch them, obviously. These are very real and they are very locked up. And they're also very lovely, might I add. I think they would look fabulous on me. These pearls were added to the museum after a woman claimed they were strangling her by themselves. The second this poor woman put these pearls on, she needed people around her to help yank the pearls from her neck. Yeah, these haunted pearls have nothing on Martha Wayne. Don't touch them. And finally, number one, a secret bowling alley. We'll end this list on a fun note because it's almost Friday and I'm here to have fun. And because this is probably the coolest one on this list, in my personal opinion. The Frick Collection resides in the former home of Henry Frick, of course. This is on Manhattan's Upper East Side. A handful of you have probably been here. Again, I'm jealous. This collection is a museum in itself. It contains paintings, sculptures, furniture, all historical, and all made from European artists from as far back as the 13th century. The mansion itself is rather new. That was built in 1913, and of course, it was also used as the Frick's family residence. A rich family in the early 1900s. You already know there's some secret rooms, right? Areas closed off to the public, but what's hiding in there, right? What are we missing? Well, we're missing fun, rich family stuff. Like, you know, a two-lane bowling alley built in 1914, and a billiards room, and a wood shop, and even a tiny diner, in case you get hungry. You and your rich purge family, you can go eat in a secret diner. There you go, enjoy it, 1900s. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. I hope you enjoyed this list. If you want a part two, comment down below. We'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Mm -hmm.